The Fourth Crusade and Its Aftermath Mutual suspicions and growing antagonisms between the Orthodox East and the Catholic West, grounded in the Great Schism of 1054 and exacerbated by unfortunate incidents in their direct contacts with one another during the first three Crusades, combined in 1204 to bring catastrophe to the Byzantine Empire. The Balkan Orthodox world was affected deeply by the event. Orthodox Byzantines, Serbs, and Bulgarians had experienced Catholic Crusader looting and violence in locales through which those warriors marched. They had been forced to tolerate Crusader disrespect for their traditions and insults to their faith, especially during the reign of Manuel Caninos, who personally admired the Westerners' military skills, supported the Crusaders' efforts in the Holy Land, and gave some Latin Crusader leaders important roles in Byzantine state affairs. Popular Orthodox animosity toward the interlopers led to a massacre of Catholics in Constantinople in 1182. The Angelos emperors had come to power on a wave of anti-Latin sentiment. During their reigns, rulers and ruled alike viewed the Latin Crusaders as a papal threat to the Orthodox Byzantine state itself, a state that they believed personified the divinely ordained world order for all Christians. Suspicion of the Orthodox Easterners also grew in the West. Although the Crusades needed cooperation between both branches of Christendom to succeed, some Westerners condemned the Byzantines as schismatics and considered Constantinople a legitimate target for a crusade, believing that fighting heretics was the spiritual equivalent of combating Muslim unbelievers. Therefore, assaulting Byzantium could be justified religiously as a crusade. Pope Innocent III was determined to reunite the two branches of Christendom on Catholic terms and to launch a fourth crusade to recover the Holy Lands for Christianity. In 1199 he called for a new crusade, but his appeal was met enthusiastically only among the nobility of northern France. They contracted with Venetian doge Enrico Dandolo for ships to transport their anticipated crusading army to the east. A secret clause in the agreement designated Egypt, rather than Palestine, as the crusaders' target. In 1202 the participating crusaders gathered in Venice, waiting to board the large fleet into which the Venetians had invested a year of construction effort and much municipal money. The French crusaders were led by a northern Italian count, Boniface de Montferrat, who some years earlier, while in Constantinople, had played an important role in Byzantine affairs. Normans from the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies augmented the Crusaders' ranks. From Pope to common warrior, the Fourth Crusade was riddled with enemies of the Orthodox Byzantine Empire. Innocent III personally was dedicated to bringing the Orthodox East under papal authority. The Normans were traditional antagonists of the Byzantines. The Venetians were angry over the economic discrimination that they suffered from the Byzantines, who showed increasing favor to Pisa and Genoa, Venice's commercial rivals. Dandolo, who emerged as the central figure and mainspring of the undertaking, thus had economic grievances to settle with Byzantium. Yet too much should not be made of the obvious anti-Byzantine antipathy among the Crusades' participants in causing its misdirected culmination. A series of fateful circumstances combined with the Crusaders' sentiments proved decisive in the matter. The crusading army that gathered at Venice was smaller than expected, but its leaders had contracted ships in advance based on original estimates of need. Dandolo convinced Montferrat that the smaller force could make up Venice's enormous construction costs by helping him capture the Dalmatian port city of Zadar, which then technically lay under Hungarian authority. That feat was accomplished in 1202. While wintering at Zadar, the Crusaders were approached by Alexios Angelos, son of Isaac II, Angelos, who had been deposed and blinded in 1195 by Alexios III. Patronized by Philip of Swabia, a contender for the Holy Roman Imperial Throne and Isaac's son-in-law, young Alexios sought the Crusaders' help in restoring his father to power in Byzantium. Although Pope Innocent opposed the idea by threatening them with excommunication, Alexios's promise to aid the Crusaders' holy war once they restored Isaac won over the Crusades' leaders. Under the pretext of aiding Isaac, 
the Crusaders descended on Constantinople in 1203. Although the effort succeeded, Isaac proved too much a creature of the Orthodox East to play the role of lackey for Catholic Westerners, whom the Byzantines looked on, with some justification, as barbaric and culturally underdeveloped. Isaac did not feel bound by promises made in his name by his son, who now ruled as the more dominant co-emperor Alexios IV, Angelos. Alexios IV himself had second thoughts about the matter and prevaricated in providing the Crusaders with the promised support. Forced to winter outside of Constantinople, the Crusaders grew restless and suspicious. They raided the countryside to forage, and skirmishes with Byzantine troops multiplied. In 1204 an uprising in the capital placed the anti-Latin Alexios V, Mortsuflos on the throne, and the Crusaders finally turned their greed and frustration on the Byzantines, whom they considered, justifiably, to have reneged on promises of support. They assaulted the city by sea and land in April, breaking through the seawalls along the Golden Horn, and the Byzantine imperial and orthodox courts fled. Once inside the capital, the Crusaders gave vent to a venomous cultural animosity. The wholesale raping, pillaging, and plundering inflicted on the stricken city, the largest and wealthiest in the world at the time, were unprecedented. The Orthodox East never forgot or forgave the Catholic West for the sack of Constantinople, and the event sealed the gulf between the two European societies. Illustrating the extent of Byzantium's internal decline preceding the catastrophe was the ease with which Thrace, southern Macedonia, Thessaly, Attica, and the Peloponnese fell to the Crusader forces following Constantinople's fall. In feudal fashion, the victors divided the conquered territories among themselves. Baldwin of Flanders was proclaimed Emperor of Constantinople, controlling Thrace and a small strip of northwest Anatolian territory. Montferrat received the Kingdom of Thessaloniki, encompassing the region around the city, part of southeastern Macedonia, and Thessaly. The rest of the territorial spoils, the Duchy of Athens, the city and the region of Attica, and the Principality of Achaia, the Peloponnese, were distributed as vassal fiefs to leading warrior princes. Venice received control over a part of Constantinople, most of the Aegean islands, and small corners of the Peloponnese, Crete, and the cities along the Adriatic coast, while the Venetian peer Morosini was raised to Latin, Catholic, Patriarch of the East. Faced with a fait accompli, Pope Innocent III accepted the destruction of Byzantium as God's will. The resulting Latin Empire, weakened from inception by Western-style feudal rivalries, sank few roots in the hostile Orthodox East. Three Orthodox states emerged as contenders for expelling the Latins and re-establishing the Orthodox Empire. The first was the so-called Empire of Nicaea, founded in Anatolia by refugees from Constantinople. Under Theodore I, Lascaris the Nicaeans effectively kept the Latins bottled up in their Anatolian coastal foothold. The other two contenders were located in the Balkans. Bulgaria under Kaloyan became the strongest Slavic Balkan state by 1203. Serbia, ruled by Stefan II, Nemanja, was reduced to dependency. Kuman forces again augmented the army. Hungarian holdings south of the Danube were taken, and, after Constantinople fell, Kaloyan acquired some Byzantine territory in Thrace and Macedonia. In late 1204 Kaloyan accepted nominal union with the papacy to gain official recognition for both his title of Tsar and the self-proclaimed Chernovo Patriarchate. Pope Innocent, however, recognized him only as King, not Tsar, and the Chernovo Archbishop as Primate, not Patriarch. Kaloyan simply ignored the fine official distinctions and set about threatening the intruding Latins to his south. In early 1205 Kaloyan intervened in Thrace on behalf of Greek landholders in revolt against their new Latin overlords. Latin Emperor Baldwin I marched against him and was defeated outside of Adrianople, taken prisoner, and brought to Kaloyan's capital at Ternovo, where he died in captivity. Virtually all of Thrace fell into Bulgarian hands, except for the city of Adrianople, which the local Greeks held. 
Kaloyan then moved against the kingdom of Thessaloniki and captured the fortress of Ceres. Only a year after the Westerners' stunning success at Constantinople, the Latin Empire was weakened seriously by the Bulgarians. Kaloyan, however, was assassinated in 1207 while besieging Thessaloniki, and his nephew Boril proclaimed himself ruler. Many Boyars refused to recognize Boril's accession, which threw Bulgaria into a decade of internal unrest until forces loyal to the sons of former Tsar Ivan I, Asen overthrew Boril and placed Ivan II, Asen on the throne. Personally mild, pious, and generous, Ivan also proved an effective military commander and statesman. His reign came to represent the apogee of the Second Bulgarian Empire. Eparos, the other Balkan contender for Orthodox imperial restoration, was founded by Michael I, Angelos Doukas, a cousin of Emperors Isaac II and Alexios III, Angelos. Located in western Greece and southern Albania, with its capital at Arda, Michael's state retained the former Byzantine administrative system and a sound military base. Eparos consciously preserved Byzantium's heritage and stood in opposition to the Latin kingdom of Thessaloniki to its east, the Venetians in the Adriatic, and the Slav Bulgarians to its north. Under Michael's successor Theodore Angelos Doukas Konninos, 1215-30, Eparos briefly achieved ascendancy in the Balkans. Theodore spent a lengthy apprenticeship in Nicaea with Theodore Lascaris prior to acquiring the Epiro throne. While there, he had recognized Lascaris's supremacy through a sworn oath of fealty. Once in Epiros, however, Theodore embraced Michael's goal of reconstituting Byzantium from Arda, rendering conflict with Nicaea unavoidable. His first act was the capture of a new Latin emperor Peter de Courtney. Peter was traveling to Constantinople from France via Rome, where he had been crowned by the Pope, when Theodore seized him in the Albanian Alps and had him executed. Soon thereafter the Epirote ruler embarked on a sweeping campaign against his Bulgarian and Latin neighbors. In 1217 Theodore overran most of Macedonia and pushed on against the Thessalian territories of the Latin kingdom of Thessaloniki. At the time of the Epirote attack, that kingdom was weakened, its ruler, Boniface de Montferrat, had been killed fighting the Bulgarians, many of its warrior knights had returned to the west, and the temporarily leaderless Latin Empire could provide no concrete support. By 1220 all of mainland Greece west of the Pindos Mountains was in Epirote hands. Theodore finally took Thessaloniki itself in 1224, and the Latin kingdom of Thessaloniki disappeared. By proclaiming himself emperor, Theodore placed himself in open opposition to the Nicene emperor John III, Vataxes. Although on the verge of collapse after the Epirote assaults, the Latin Empire's life was prolonged by the disunity among its three sworn enemies. In Anatolia, Vataxes captured all of the Latin's territory except for the coast opposite to Constantinople. Nicene troops crossed the Dardanelles into Thrace and occupied Adrianople. Just as the Latin Empire looked ripe for destruction, Theodore of Epiros attacked the Nicaeans, defeated them, and advanced toward Constantinople. Theodore, in turn, was stymied by Ivan II, Asen of Bulgaria. Ivan aimed at nothing less than the creation of a Bulgarian Byzantine Empire centered on Constantinople. An anti-Nicene alliance with Theodore of Epiros was patched together. In the Latin Empire, Emperor Baldwin II was a minor. The Latins offered Ivan the regency, and the young emperor was betrothed to Ivan's daughter. Theodore of Epiros then declared war on Bulgaria but was defeated decisively in 1230 by Ivan at the Battle of Klokotnitsa, in which Theodore was captured and blinded. After Klokotnitsa, Epiros's role in the struggle for Byzantine restoration became marginal. Ivan occupied all of western Thrace, Macedonia, and a portion of northern Albania, while Theodore's brother Manuel Angelos was permitted to retain Thessaloniki and Epiros as Ivan's vassal. With Theodore of Epiros eliminated, the Latins grew frightened of their powerful Bulgarian regent, so the deal with Ivan was abrogated, and John de Brienne was named regent and co-emperor for young Baldwin. 
In retaliation, Ivan declared war on the Latins and concluded an alliance with Vaitatsas as Nicaea. Ivan renounced Kaloyan's nominal union of the Bulgarian Church with the Pope. The Orthodox Patriarchate in Nicaea recognized the Ternovo Primate as Orthodox Bulgarian Patriarch, and the Bulgarians once again possessed an independent Orthodox Church. In the midst of a combined Bulgarian Nicaean advance on Constantinople, Ivan realized that the fall of the Latin Empire would benefit the Nicaeans more than he himself and ultimately result in Bulgaria facing a far more serious rival than the weak Latins. He turned on Vaitatsis but hurriedly made peace in 1237, following an epidemic outbreak in Ternovo that killed a number of Ivan's immediate family. Ivan interpreted their deaths as God's wrath for his double-crossing a fellow Orthodox ruler. Ivan died in 1241 and Bulgaria soon after was ravaged by a Mongol-Tatar invasion. The blow dealt by the invaders was so damaging that Bulgaria collapsed as a serious Orthodox imperial contender. By the end of 1242 Nicaea found no serious rival remaining in the field. Bulgaria was weakened by two successive child emperors under ineffectual regencies, anarchistic Balyar unrest, and Mongol-Tatar vassalage, which permitted Vaitatsis to seize most Bulgarian territory south of the Balkan mountains in Thrace and Macedonia. Vaitatsis forced Epirote ruler John I, Angelos to renounce his claim on the imperial title and to accept the position of despot under his suzerainty. Theodore II, Lascaris, Vaitatsis's successor, continued military efforts against Bulgaria but lost Epiros to a revolt in 1257 led by Michael II, Angelos. By that time the Latin Empire was reduced to little more than the immediate environs of Constantinople itself. When Lascaris was succeeded by a child, John IV, Lascaris, a military revolt in Nicaea led to the regency of Michael VIII, Palaiologos, who eventually imprisoned and ultimately blinded John in 1261. Michael forged an alliance with Bulgaria and concluded a treaty with Genoa, Venice's chief commercial rival in the eastern Mediterranean, granting it privileges similar to those enjoyed by the Venetians in the former Byzantine Empire. In July 1261 a Genoese fleet ferried a Nicaean army across the Straits to Thrace. A reconnoitering force of that army operating in the vicinity of Constantinople found the city virtually undefended, most of the Latin and Venetian forces were off besieging an island in the Black Sea. Sympathetic supporters inside the city informed the Nicaeans of an undefended portal in the land walls, through which a small detachment entered and opened a main military gate for the rest of the army. Baldwin II and his followers fled, and the Latin Empire came to an anticlimactic end. Michael VIII entered Constantinople in triumph and proclaimed the re-establishment of the Byzantine Empire. Although the coup immediately bestowed great international status, restored Byzantium was a hollow shell of its former self. Its territories encompassed a corner of northwestern Anatolia, Thrace, Macedonia, Thessaly, and a smattering of small holdings in the Peloponnese. To its north, Bulgaria was a wary ally. Most of Greece lay in Latin Frank hands. All of the northwestern Balkans was lost irretrievably. Venice and Hungary controlled Dalmatia and Croatia, Bosnia enjoyed an uneasy independence, and a new Orthodox power, Serbia, was on the rise. 